Welcome, everybody, to the latest edition of the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian Show, part of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show family. Along with Zach Meisel, I'm Adam the Bull. Today, we talk about the uh, Guardians bouncing back after getting swept in a doubleheader by the Yankees, the 2024 debut of Xavion Curry, and just how good is the AL Central as we approach the end of the third week of the baseball season. That's coming up on the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian Show. Zach, good to see you this morning. How's things going? Going pretty well. I I, I can't wrap my head around an eleven and five start for this team because we're so used to them struggling. Right in April, it's it's weird. It certainly is, and it's not like yeah. I mean, they played the White Sox, who were not very good, and they played Oakland, but the rest of the teams they've played are at least decent. So it's not like they've had you know sixteen games against all bad teams. They've played some you know, decent teams here and they've played well. They've won games. They never win, right? When they 100%. fall behind three, nothing against the Yankees on Sunday after losing the doubleheader on Saturday, you think, okay, this is the team. Maybe we expected they'll roll over here. It'll be a sweep. I mean, they, they get into Boston. They have a sleepy Monday morning game. The mm -hmm. offense takes a while to wake up. That's not a game you expect them to win. They're winning a lot of those and it's, you're right. They're, they're beating decent pitching. They're doing things that you normally don't see. It's not like they play really good teams every year in April either. I mean, right. Um, so this is this is different, and it may just makes me really curious to see where it goes. Guardians still fifth in the majors. I know it's still early, but they are fifth in the majors in runs scored per game. And believe it or not, they are second in the American League, only behind what is quickly becoming, I think at least, will become a juggernaut in that Baltimore Orioles line. That, that team is ridiculous. But uh, I did not ha have that uh, as an expectation. Again, it's way early. It could go down the tubes. But for them to be fifth in baseball and second in the American League in runs scored, mind-blowing at this point. Yeah, and it's – I mean, this is not a perfect team, right? There's a lot no. you can – critique about it and yet in spite of all of their deficiencies they're still finding ways to win i mean the bottom half of the lineup has been really rough uh, especially the last week to 10 days and yet they're still finding ways to score runs yeah the starting pitching has been really rough for most of the season especially since bieber went down and yet other people are stepping up whether it's the bullpen whether it's xavion curry who we can talk about yeah um so it, it's that sort of resolve you didn't see last year. I mean, two years ago, everyone thinks, okay, they slashed and dashed 192 games and it was great, but they didn't really take off that year until August. Yes. Last year, they never got going. It never looked like a team that you could count on to come back or fight through adversity. I know it's only been 16 games, but you're seeing some really healthy signs of like the resolve that a good team needs to have. I agree. I, I think your point of they're winning games that they haven't won in recent years is right on the money because it, these like late comebacks, they've been very clutch in big situations. There's been a lot of situations where we've seen this a couple of times, like they've blown a chance to score, to take the lead, tie a game. And you're like, oh, here we go. And then the next inning, they come through and make up for it. And I feel like we've seen that a lot in the early going. There's been some some big time clutch moments, both offensively and pitching wise, and yes, it, it's really promising. And you know, you talk about the bottom of the lineup. Even you know, I was ready. I was pretty much ready to des uh, designate uh, Estevan Florial for assignment. Then he had a couple of good games here. You know, we'll see if it if it if it lasts. I remember Mike Zanino had that one game where he hit two home runs last year, and that was <laughs> about it for him on the At season. One time. But let's let's get into Xavion Curry because. They needed a good performance by him, you know, with everything going on with the pitching. You're going to go with Ben Lively on Wednesday. And Curry's a guy with very little major league experience, obviously. And, uh, you know, he starts the season on the injured list. And he comes out there, and, and, and it was a great pitching match. Both starters were fantastic yesterday. There was no offense early in the game. But he, I mean, to get five really good innings out of him, that was huge, I thought. Yeah, they're, they're going to need... Someone, 
preferably yeah. multiple people to to prove they're dependable and can go six innings. I don't know if Curry is that person. That was a great start in a moment where they needed. I mean, there's Stephen Vogt managed Seattle's bullpen last season. He understands that that's one thing that maybe has gone under the radar as I think he's used the bullpen really well so far this year. And he has experience doing that. But he also knows how important it is to keep those guys fresh. Oh, yeah. And so it's no surprise to hear him. They had the off day Thursday. They had the rain out Friday, doubleheader Saturday. And they've got a week of games here with no days off. So he he was a little nervous about how much the bullpen was going to get used because these starters just haven't gone deep. And you're not expecting guys to go seven, eight innings every time out right now. It's it's still early in the season. They're still building up, but it's been rough. You know, guys like Tanner Bybee, Tristan McKenzie, who you're used to going six, seven innings, right. haven't been able to do that. So, you know, then you get Carlos Carrasco going three or four, Logan Allen going four or five. So it's it's helpful that they got that from Curry, especially since Curry had only had two rehab starts. He's building back up. Lively will be in the same boat. Um, so they're just sort of patching this together. It's not what you want to be doing in April. So far, they've survived. But at some point, they're going to need some reliability. And I think Bybee and McKenzie are the two guys who have to sort of anchor that. I guess Logan Allen, too. But, um, you know, it's going to be mixing and matching. I don't know who's going to last here. They're going to have some decisions to make in the next few days. Um, right. But Carrasco, Curry, and Lively are sort of there to hold the end of the rotation, stitch it together until Gavin Williams comes back. Yeah, no, I mean, you look at the ERAs. Um, McKenzie's ERA is 623. Bybee's is 593. And Logan Allen is 506. If I would have told you that, you know, four starts in for Logan Allen and three for Bybee and McKenzie, those would be their ERAs. That Bieber would be on the injured list. We'd probably think their record would be reverse right now. You know what I mean? I mean, like, yeah. you, we said it off season, like, okay, if this team's going to win the division, it's good because their starting pitching is great. Well, their starting pitch, pitching is outside of Bieber has been anything but great. Um, and so, but here they are. So sometimes it's hard to explain. Sometimes it's just baseball. Well, we knew, I mean, if you, you looked at this, if, if you knew Bieber was going to look as good as he did the first two starts and Bybee and Williams and Allen were certainly impressive as rookies last season, McKenzie, McKenzie was like an ace level pitcher in 2022. Yeah. The ceiling for those five is super high. I yeah. mean, that's top five rotation in baseball potential, but two of those guys had didn't pitch much last year because of injuries. And the other three are sophomores and you know, there can always be regression or just adjustments that have to be made. So it was a, for a team that has had its rotation be the backbone for about a decade now, mm -hmm. it was a group that had a super high ceiling, but was very fragile. No. And you've seen it. Bieber looked like old Bieber. Yeah. There's that ceiling and he's out for the year. There's the, the fragility. So it's, it's, they've seen both ends of the spectrum. I think they need, they need the kids to sort of grow up in a hurry. And and more than anything, you just don't want to put too much pressure on the bullpen early because we can talk about some of the names, guys who have stepped up back there, guys who no one expected to, to pitch as well as they have. Yeah. You just don't want to force them to have to be that dominant for six months. Right. And it's, yes, and the the the, the bullpen's going to get worn down if if Bybee and Allen and McKenzie and eventually Williams can't go deeper into games. I mean, there's just so much you can expect from guys like Ben Lively and Xavion Curry and Carrasco at this point in his career. But the young pitchers, they've got to be able to go a little longer. And I know teams are obviously careful with young pitchers, but eventually they, you know, they're going to have to pitch longer. What, what, what is Gavin Williams' status right now? What, what, how close are we to seeing him in the big leagues? I think he threw like a two inning sim game in Arizona on Monday. Yeah. So he's still building up. Then, you know, he'll go three, four, and it'll eventually turn into rehab assignment. Yeah. Where usually you want them to get up to like 70 pitches or so. So that when they then make a major league start, it they can build up to 80, 85. So uh, he's still a few weeks away, probably. Um, right. They, they need him though. I mean, it's, it's, 
he's got the best stuff, I think, of anybody left. Oh, and if you can God, get a guy yeah. who can strike out, you know, 10 guys, 11 guys per nine innings, that helps too. A lot of the guys right now are not big strikeout guys, and um, sometimes it can be tougher to pitch deep into games because you're giving up so much contact and more base runners. So yeah, they need him. Well, if you look at, I mean, Carrasco, Allen, Bybee, McKenzie, between them are averaging significantly less than one strikeout per inning, which... And look at the walks. I mean, all yeah, those guys. Uh, let's see, 20. Between the four of them, it's tw- 35 walks, and they've pitched about 50 innings. That That's pretty pretty awful. And if you take out Allen, it's even worse, I think. Yeah. Mackenzie Carrasco and Bybee, it's like almost seven walks per nine innings. Those three guys, 29 walks in 39 and a third. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. But listen, there's talent. We we know those guys can pitch. We know the talent's there. So you just got to hope they turn it around. Um, interestingly, I believe the the this is the Guardian's best record to start a season since the 2011 year which, of course, was a year they were expected to be bad. They got off to a great start halfway through the season, and then they complete – because that was the year I moved here. I was going to say, I, were you here for that? I So I wasn't here for the start, but I was – I knew I was coming here around the start of the baseball season. So I was locked – you know, I was really paying close attention to the Guardi or the Indians at the time, and I remember being excited that they were off to a good start. I was like, oh, this would be great if we start the show, and the Brown season is going to start. And, you know, the Guardian's going to be really good. And then by the time we went on air, they were, you know, in a free fall that year. So that was my first year on the beat. And I'll never forget. So so Tom Hamilton started on the broadcast team in, in 1990. And he got to spring training that year. And he's this, I think he would have been in his 30s and, and yeah. wide-eyed, dream job. And he goes to spring training and thinks, and it's easy to do this because uh, like hope springs eternal every spring and sure. every camp. Yeah. But he thought, Oh my God, the Indians are going to be amazing. Like yeah. they're going to be so good. And I get to call these games. This is a dream. And Herb score said, Hey kid, they're going to stink. They're going to be <laughs> terrible. Like they are every year, yeah. but it's your job to, to make sure that you're on your a game every night. And even when they're losing their, 97th game you're still bringing it in the booth and in 2011 my first year they start 30 and 15 under manny acta and they were dreadful the two seasons before that yep and i'm watching ezekiel carrera lay down a a squeeze bunt in the eighth inning against the reds to score the go-ahead run and i'm thinking this is the season of dreams this is going to be like they're going to make a documentary about this season (laughs) <laughs> Who would have thought this team is 30 and 15 Shelly Duncan's hitting home runs and it's, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. And I'm, I'm thinking, Oh my God, like what a dream. This is my first year doing this. Like I'm, I'm going to be able to, to cover this team. What a, what an honor. They stunk, right? Oh, they traded for Ubaldo Jimenez. They fizzled out. I think they finished like yeah. 80 and 82 maybe. Yeah. Um, I think that's right. And that so was, I, yeah, you know, I don't know where this team's going to wind up. Um, the rose colored glasses are certainly, not as rosy as they were in my first year, I think or yeah. in Tom Hamilton's first year. But you see, I think we've seen signs that like the things they did that allowed them to win games two years ago are working for them again. And maybe the bullpen's better. Maybe yeah. the top of the lineup is better. And maybe they have some reinforcements coming. All right, we're going to talk more about that. And what who's going to lose their roster spot when Ben Lively gets uh, activated here on Wednesday to make the start to rain out and the double header led to, you know, originally we were talking about would it be Curry, would it be Lively? Well, now it's going to be both because of that rain out. But first this, folks, I got to talk to you about something that uh, is very interesting here because, uh, and and if I had the read ready to go, it would be even better because it's the game time app. You see, sometimes you're looking for tickets. And what happens? You want tickets to the game. You deal with some of these uh, ticket brokers. It's a pain in the neck. You don't know if you're really getting tickets. You don't know what's happening. But not with Game Time. Game Time is absolutely the best. Check out the Game Time app or go to GameTime.co. It is absolutely amazing. You can get tickets for all the baseball games, 
football games, basketball, concerts, shows, anything you want. They have special deals, uh, priority last-minute deals where you can save up to 60% off by buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater. So whether it's the Guardians, the Browns, the Cavs, go to the Game Time app. It's going to be a lot of fun. Check it out. Uh, create it, create an account and redeem the code. Use the code locked on NFL for $20 off. Again, download the game, download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off your first purchase. Also, check out the other uh, Ultimate Cleveland shows, including the main show, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. I'll be back on today starting at 11. And the Ultimate Cleveland Cavs show, getting you ready for the Cavs and Magic in the first round of the playoffs. That is all coming up as part of the Ultimate Cleveland family. All right, Zach. So, um, as, as I mentioned, Ben Lively's coming off the IR. He's going to start tomorrow in Boston. Um, who are you expecting to lose their roster spot when he is activated? Yeah, I... Who would have thought this would be such a difficult decision because yeah. everybody in the bullpen has been fantastic. Right. Maybe I mean, if you're going strictly on performance and you know, it's not going to be Scott Barlow because he's making $7 million and he's a veteran. I mean, like, like I guess Eli Morgan, if you're right. really split nitpicking, but he hasn't been terrible. Um, I don't is know. It, is it possible they send, even though he pitched well yesterday, they send Curry down, and at least it helps them kick the can down the road a few more days. Maybe somebody gets hurt. I, you know, who knows? You know, it's possible? It's possible, yeah. yeah. I, you know, it depends what they want to do in the end because you have six right. starters. That's true. So Carlos Carrasco is scheduled to start Thursday, the finale in Boston. They haven't announced what's going to happen after that mckenzie would go friday if they're staying on that order um he hasn't looked right i uh, he says he's healthy and fine and just needs to keep working out some mechanical kinks but you know i i you could send a reliever down i don't know if that would be morgan or someone we're not expecting like this would have been Cade Smith in any other scenario sure because he's the the rookie who made the team and you can yep. bounce him between Columbus and Cleveland all year but he's thrown nine scoreless innings with 13 strikeouts so right. I, he's been fantastic so right. I, I don't think you can get rid of him so and Tyler beatty has been great he, yeah and he's he you know he's been like a setup man some days mop yep. up duty others like he's been versatile um Hunter Gaddis has turned into uh, yeah, he's just not going anywhere. the guy you want in to clean up any mess. He's been right. awesome. So it's, it's, it's tough. So, so, you know, is who do you want your five to be? Do you, you know, you've got Allen Bybee, presumably McKenzie, and then you have to pick two of Carrasco lively and Curry. I would think Curry is the best of those three. Mm, if you're agree. sending him down, you're sending him down just because of the timing here. Yeah. Um, but do you cut ties with Carrasco if he has another shaky start Thursday? The problem is you have to make this decision before before then. Right. So it's tricky. I really don't have a good feel for it. Yeah. And they if they do send Curry down, then you can't bring him back up unless somebody goes on the injured list. Yeah. Like, so there's 15 days or it's 10 days. Right. That they, they do have an off day coming up. They actually have two off days coming up. So that yeah. could that could help just with creativity here. They should be able to, like, if he goes and makes one start in Columbus, maybe he comes right back up. But the other thing is Lively doesn't have options. So he's here to stay. So do you want him in the rotation? Do you want him as a long man in the bullpen? Do you need a long man in the bullpen? It's, I don't know. This is why, I'll by the way, on. this is why front office people and managers hate the 13 pitcher limit because mm. of scenarios like this, you're costing people jobs. You're making right. like, it would be an easy situation. They could send a hitter down for 10 days, carry yeah. an extra pitcher for a little bit and then figure it out later. That's true. You know, I forgot about that. I wasn't even thinking about that limit. 
Yeah, but you re- you're right because you really could. You especially, you know, I mean, well, in the American League, there's always been the DH, but you could go with three hitters on the bench. At least, you know, you wouldn't want to do that the whole season, but early in the season before it's the dog days of summer and you have days off, you could go a few days with three guys on the bench. But yes, because of this limit on the relief pitchers, it it's, you know, definitely an issue, but I guess that maybe it'll, who knows, it maybe works itself out. You never know. So, you know, guys are dropping like flies these days. Somebody can get hurt in the next 24 hours in this game tonight. I mean, not that you're rooting for that, of course, but you just, there's been so many injuries that it's crazy. Um, Zach, the, the Guardians start action today, and it's 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 a little odd to be looking at standings, but it's still fun to do, and they are in first place by a half game over Kansas City. I wanted to talk about the division for a minute because, I mean, Kansas City, I, I think they lost, what, their first four games or something? And they have been playing great since then. Well, Kansas City lost four of their first six, so they started two and four, and they've gone nine and two since starting two and four. And, you know, listen, they, they obviously they've played the White Sox four times and they the Mets aren't very good. And um, but, they you know, they played Baltimore, although they did lose two out of three there. They but swept. all those teams would have said the same thing about them. Like, That's we fair. played the Royals. So, so who cares? Right. And the Royals, nice. they're pitching. You know, they spent on some veteran pitchers. And they've been guys like Seth, Lu- Seth Lugo. It started. um last year when they got Cole Reagans, who was not like a, a huge prospect, but since they got him, he's been absolutely fantastic. Seth Lugo, who pitched for them last night, he's been a really good addition. Doesn't strike a lot of guys out, but he's, I think he's given up like one or two runs or less in all his starts. And this James MacArthur in the bullpen has really seemed to, at least for now, solve their closer issue because he's been really good after a, a but I, I mean, I, listen, I don't know how good they are. They do have the superstar in Bobby Witt. The guy's, amazing they're a decent team i i don't think they're i i again i think when it's all said and done they're not going to make the playoffs but they're not going to be a, a set you know a 68 win team this year they're good they're going to be competitive i think you know i i spent some time around them in spring training and i said to someone with the team i said i have a weird feeling i made a prediction at some point that i thought four different teams would spend at least a day in first place in the central with the white Sox being the only team that didn't. Yeah. And in my thinking, yeah, I thought that the twins, tigers and guardians, it would be a three team race. And I just had a weird feeling. The Royals were going to get off to a good start. And I said this to a team official and the team official goes, have you looked at our schedule? Cause they had a bunch of games against the Astros. Yeah. And I mean, Baltimore. you read the, the schedule hasn't been tough yet, but I yeah. think it's about to get tougher. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this person, with the team is trying to convince me they're not going to get off to a good start. Um, but they have, and it's interesting because they screwed themselves by hanging on to those veteran players after they won the world series for yep. too long. Yep. They didn't trade anyone. They tried to, to run it back for a couple of years and it didn't work. And then they were left with old expensive players and no farm system. And they have lost a ton of games for the last six, seven years um, and they still don't have a good farm system. They drafted all these pitchers, Brady Singer and right. guys like that, yeah. who didn't pan out. Daniel Lynch and yeah. Asa Lacey. And yeah. um, so they're they're in a tough spot. So they pivoted this winter and they went and signed a bunch of veterans, not stars, but guys who could just do the job, wouldn't be too expensive, and would just raise their floor. Yeah. And I so I think what you're gonna see is a team that wins 70 some games and it's just annoying to play because they're not, you can't just beat up on them. Right. Um, and you're seeing that and, you know, credit to Brian Sweeney, former Cleveland bullpen coach who is really good at what he does and has those pitchers pitching really well. Yeah. Um, the division is interesting. It's really interesting because I think the Tigers are could be a decent team. The Twins can be a decent team. The Guardians can be a decent team. The Royals are not a pushover. The White Sox might lose 110 games. Well, they are all. But there are four teams in the division finally who could win 75 plus. None of them are going to win 95, but it's at least just better overall. And yeah. it's going to make it tougher to pad your win total. 
but just for level of respect and to be more battle tested going into the end of the season, I think it's it's positive. Take a guess as to what the White Sox are averaging runs per game so far this year. I, I saw something where they've been shut out like six times in the last 12 yeah. days or something. Uh, I don't know. They're probably averaging like two and a half runs. Not even. 2.13. 2.13. That's by far the worst. The only other team under three is Oakland at 2.82. But the team that's 28th is Seattle averaging 3.41. I mean, that's a run and a quarter more, or they were running a quarter behind the, the third worst team in the league. So, yeah, I mean, that's – they are and, – and not like their pitching is very good either, but – um uh, but yeah, they stink. But yeah, this I, I, the division's a little better now. Minnesota's not playing well. I still think they'll play better as the season goes along. Um, but the, the the division is definitely more competitive than it's been because the Royals and Tigers have been so bad for so long, and now they're both you know coming out of the doldrums. Obviously, the Tigers are ahead of the Royals, but but both teams are competitive now at minimum, and they haven't been. I mean, do you? I, I, do you care about run differential? I pay attention to it. I think early early in the season it could be tricky sometimes, especially yeah. if you, you win it if you get blown out one game. But but yeah, I mean it is it is an indicator to some degree. Yes, the Royals and Guardians are first and second in the majors it's, in run differential. It's it's stunning. stunning, mind blowing. It is, and I think the White Sox are dead last, aren't they? Yes, yes. minus fifty three. It is 53, not even three weeks into the season. Yeah, that is crazy. The Royals plus 39, the Guardians plus 35. The next best is the, the Brewers at plus 27. Who had that either? The Brewers, and, and, you know, we'll see. They've lost two in a row, but the Brewers were supposed to be bad this year too, and they're playing well. All right, quick break, and I got something else I got to tell you about, so let's uh, let's talk about this. How about, how about Monopoly Go, baby? I am a very competitive person, as you know. And if you have a competitive side, because we all do, uh, the, you got to get into Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly, the board game, but it's much quicker. You play not uh, play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations building up amazing cities that bring you money. But the best part is messing with your friends. You can charge them rent on iconic properties, just like in classic Monopoly. You can rob their vaults of riches. This is something you can't do in the in the real game Monopoly. And the leaderboards show you who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just the competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to, eat, to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends right now. Download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or at Google Play. There you go. Have fun with that. Um, all right, Zach. So uh, the, the Guardians, let's look ahead to what they got going on. Obviously, they won the first game of the series with Boston and back in action today. It's a 7-10 start today after the Patriots game day yesterday. And I don't want to, you know, over hype the importance, but with Bybee's struggles early in the season, and we just talked about at the beginning of the show, how important it is for the rotation. And right now, you know, Bybee has, is, you know, until Gavin Williams comes back and with McKenzie look, being shaky, they really need Bybee to pitch well today this is not a great Boston team. I'd I'd love to see him go out there and have a dominating effort this uh, this evening. Yeah, the the schedule is really interesting because Boston weirdly is their pitching's been incredible. I think they have the best pitching in baseball so yep. far. That lineup is not what we're yep. used to seeing. I mean, they That's had right. guys who people have never heard of hitting yeah. 6, 7, 8, 9. Um you got to capitalize on that. You've got three against Boston, then three against Oakland, and then three more at home against Boston. Right. So a chance for the pitchers to get healthier before you go to Atlanta and, and face probably yeah. the best lineup in baseball. Yeah. And then the Astros who are struggling, but that's still, yeah. you know, Jose Altuve flicking home runs into the Crawford boxes in left field. Not, not exactly a fun place to pitch. So yeah, it, it's, it's a chance 
you know, McKenzie, if, if he goes Friday, he gets to face Oakland. Like that's like, get healthy, yes. take advantage of that. Um, and then same with Bybee, I think. Um, so it's, it's three starts. Like, I don't think you want to draw too many conclusions about any hitter through two and a half weeks, any pitcher through three starts, but you want to start seeing some trends in the right direction. I think, I think for Bobby, that's got to start tonight. One trend that's been heading in the right direction is the play of Gabriel Arias. We've, we've seen some life from him here recently. What do you make of how he's played lately? I like the way Steven votes used guys. No one's sitting on the bench for a week collecting yeah. dust. And if someone has a good game or two, they're back in the lineup. You know, there's so many players who, on the position player side, we don't know. I have no idea if Tyler Freeman will ever be a, an everyday player, if Will Brennan will ever be an everyday player, if Estevan Florial, Gabriel Arias, Brian Rocchio. Do we know if those guys are long-term solutions? No. Yeah. So let play the hot hand. Let someone yeah. try to take an opportunity and run with it, right? Like I, So I... I I like that Arias has a good couple good games and he's still in the lineup. Same with Florial after the back-to-back home run games. Um, I think that's the way they have to go. And then eventually you either get your answer that, hey, this guy took the opportunity and ran with it, or he can't hang. And then you go look at AAA, call up Kyle Manzardo, Chase DeLauder, right. whoever's ready. Both guys off the slow starts. I mean, it's early, but both guys. What's funny is, you know, I was obviously – annoyed about uh, Austin Hedges and not Bo Naylor playing on the opening day. And then I was like, all right, I got to calm down a little bit. It's the first game. And, you know, now 16 games in, I'm like, so far, so good. I mean, I think Stephen Vos done a heck of a job right now. So far, I can't, you know, I have very little to be critical of him of early. I thought that I asked him if the, the game Sunday, 10 innings, just absolute chaos in the final few innings, if he felt like that was his, the biggest test he's had yet. I, I yeah. thought the way he pinch hit guys, moved him around the diamond. Fry yeah. went first to catcher to first. Arias yeah. went, I think, third to first to right. I mean, it was, and you needed all those moves. Yes, absolutely. To, to win the game. I thought it was really impressive. Zach, great stuff as always. Where are you? Uh, are you, well, no, you, no, you're not, you're not in Boston. And then there, which, when's your next road trip? Uh, we got the Atlanta Houston at the end of the month. You're going uh, to that. But we got some off days. We've have, we've have off days the next two Mondays. So we that's true. All right. So we'll be so starting next week. We'll be back for the probably the next few few weeks, the foreseeable future, back to the original time of the show, Mondays at three. Everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We'll talk to you next time on the ultimate Cleveland Guardian show.